Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I'm going to go through how to build this Excel spreadsheet. And what's very special about this Excel spreadsheet is this is actually an output of two separate machine learning models ran at the same time. And the backend code of this was not only developed, but also ran exclusively on my 2020 iPad Pro. So I didn't make use of my MacBook Pro, my 15 inch or my 13 inch. This was exclusively done on the iPad. I'm gonna show you how I did it in a second, but let me explain to you what it does. What it allows you to do is you can go and put in a search term in your code, something like, I wanna learn Python, and it'll go onto YouTube. It'll find the top 10, 20, 30, you can specify that number of results, and it'll return the title, the thumbnail URL, how long that video is in seconds, the number of views, and the author. Now, where the machine learning really comes in is from columns G to J. Now, what this does is it'll actually go through the thumbnail and it'll check the picture out and it'll see whether or not that picture has a face and whether there are eyes there and whether or not that person is smiling. So originally, all I wanted to do was capture the faces and the smile. And, I, and basically, I wanted to see whether or not the person was smiling or not. The reason why I added in the eyes is I found there are certain times when the faces, it didn't actually capture it correctly, but if I added eyes as well, and if either one of these was a one, then it will tell me with a better degree of confidence that there is a face on that page, even if there wasn't a smile. So I went ahead and created that machine learning model using OpenCV. And like I said, it'll go and take this URL, it'll open up the picture, and it'll tell me whether or not there's a face on this or not. And we'll run through some examples later on in the video. The second machine learning model that it does is it calculates a similarity score between the actual title of the post as well as my search term. So here what I'm trying to see is how relevant is the actual title to what I'm putting in my actual search term. And it'll go back and vectorize both the title and vectorize my search term and then cal compute the similarity score between both of them. And we'll run through that as well. Now that this isn't going to be an extreme code review. I'm just going to walk you through how I did it. I am going to put this code on GitHub so you can go ahead and check it out for yourself. But really the intent of this video is to show you exactly what you can and can't do on the iPad Pro. There are some limitations to the code, which I'll walk you through, but for the most part, it was a fairly smooth execution. So let's jump into the code right now. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add some of the libraries that I've used for this. Now, some of these are very generic libraries, OpenCV, Pandas, uh, Pill. If you're familiar with OpenCV and you've used these, you're gonna, these are gonna be familiar to you anyways. And uh, we're going to use some NumPy and Matplotlib to do some of the conversions and calculations for the faces as well. Now here's where we're going to start using PyTube, which is actually an API that you can uh, log into YouTube to do some of the work. Make sure you capitalize the Y and the T there. And also YouTube search, which is going to go ahead and allow us to go ahead and put in the search term that we're looking for. And then return the relevant number of results that we want as well in our search term. And finally, I don't like looking at warnings, so I wanted to go ahead and remove these um, and we'll just filter them out and ignore them. So that is what this uh, particular line of code means as well. Also be sure to close that ignore with the quote, I forgot to do it. And then uh, next, we're gonna be adding in a file called docsim that I had actually created and we're gonna walk through docsim later. And what that is, is that'll actually calculate the similarity between your search term as well as the actual title as well. So now in this particular area, we're gonna start putting in the search term, or this is where you're gonna go ahead and define what it is that you wanna search on YouTube, as well as define the maximum parameters of the results that you wanna receive back. So the next part of this is where we actually start building the result set for this. So we're gonna put in the YouTube search term uh, API. We're gonna determine the max results. Which in this case, I put 10. You can put 20, 30, 40, whatever you want. It just may take a little bit longer to run. And in this uh, little block of code here, you don't really need this for the final result. This was just me looking at the links to see whether or not it actually printed the right uh, link uh, image URL. But really at the Y2, uh, YT data list, this is where we're actually building an empty list and now I'm saying I want to go ahead and iterate through all of the 10 results that I have and pull in the title, URL, length, views, and author which we saw earlier. And here I'm just creating some empty data frames for face, eyes, and smile. And I've pasted in this entire code, it was way too much for me to type out, but what this code basically walks us through is I'm going ahead and passing in the thumbnail URL. And what it's basically doing is it's going back and converting that thumbnail URL into um, an actual pill image. So it's taking that response, converting it into a pill image. We're, we're going to grayscale it next. 
and then finally get it prepared so that it can actually be uh, ran in the uh, with the heart cascade so when you look at pi 2 uh, or you know a lot of other uh, ids in this case it comes with a built-in heart cascade especially if they run open cv and we're basically drawing a bounding box um, down here around the face and once it finds a face then it's going to go ahead and say okay now that I found the face, let me go look for the eyes and also let me look to see if there's a smile. And then it's going to return the length of the faces, smiles, and eyes. All that means is if I found something, if I found any faces or any smiles or any eyes, then that basically means that I have a match. Otherwise, I don't. And that's how this function essentially works. And finally, I have my Doxim model at the end, which will now say, okay, I have all these faces um, and I'm going to put that into a data frame. But at the same time, in the data frame, I also want to add in a call some call sim score, which is going to do the compare function for me between the actual title as well as my search term. Now this will print out a data frame, and I need to go ahead and open it up. So as you can see, there's an XLS file open there, but I can't open it up with Pi2, which is the application that I'm using here. So we're going to go ahead and open up Excel. I don't have the paid version, so I'm just going to be able to take a look at it. I can't modify anything because that's just Excel for you on the iPad. And as you can see, I'm opening it up. And now what you're going to see is that it's the exact same file that we saw at the start of this video. So it's got the title, it's got the URL, the length, views, author, and all that other stuff. And if I ran this on 30 results, I would have got the results back for 30. If I ran a different search term, I would have ran it back or got it back for a different search term as well. So this is an example of how you can run, I would say, a pretty comprehensive um, machine learning model on an iPad Pro. Now, let's go ahead and put this to the test. So we see that it's got the title over there, which is interesting. We got the URL and we got a whole bunch of other data. So let's grab the link to this URL. It shows that it has zero faces, zero eyes, zero smile. Let's go ahead and open it up on Google Chrome and let's paste it in as a link and see what it actually shows us as the picture. And as you can see, there's no faces. Python in four hours, no faces, no smile or nothing like that. So let's go back to our Excel spreadsheet. Now let's pick another one, which is the second one, which shows that it does have faces, smile, and it has eyes. So let's put this to the test to see whether or not it actually worked. So let's paste this in here, and there you go, Mosh. So now you see there's a face, there's an eye, there's a smile. So that was Mosh, he's a very popular programmer. And uh, now let's go ahead and look at another one. And there's Tech Lead, another popular YouTuber. So again, there was a face, there's a eyes, there's a smile. Not, I don't know if there's a smile. It shows that there was a smile, but I guess, you know, it's not perfect. And this is where you got to go back and look at your um, parameters to see whether or not you set it properly or not. So this is just what I would call a starter model, but you can go ahead and uh, obviously enhance your parameters. But let's take a look at this last one. And it shows that there is a face, smile, and eyes. And this one is, there we go, Mosh again, different one. But at the end of the day, you can see that it's working. It's doing its job. For the most part, it's done a pretty good job in recognizing whether or not there's a smile or not on that image. All right, so now this is a Doxin model that I said I was going to walk you through. Here's the one limitation of using Pi2, or in this case, I haven't come across any application that does this on the iPad, and that is using NLTK. So even if you do import NLTK, it doesn't work. I actually have to go and print all the stop words and import them in there. So that's the only piece that I would say is a downside. I mean, other than that, it's been working pretty smooth. Um, and if you were to just look at the actual code, what it's really doing is it's taking the search term and it's taking the actual title and it's vectorizing it and then it's doing the cosine similarity between the two. There's multiple ways to do um, document similarity scores, uh, but this was one of them. It's a very popular one. Uh, it uses TFIDF. So at the end of the day, it's a, it's a fairly good mechanism to use um, and it works well on the iPad. Okay guys, so that's a good example of how you can use machine learning on an iPad Pro 2020. So let's get back to my thoughts on whether or not I still feel that the iPad 2020 is a laptop replacement. The way to answer this question is it really depends on the user. So if you're a pure developer and that is your full-time job, I would probably say no. And that's the reason, the reason why I say that is it's got a lot of its uh, limitations like NLTK for example is a great example where you can't you know import everything um, and at the end of the day you'll have a better developer experience on a macbook or a laptop 
Having said that, I would say the developer experience on an iPad, especially the iPad Pro, is, has gotten significantly better. And when you ask somebody like me, this is a perfect, perfect, perfect solution. I don't even touch my laptop anymore because I do a lot of emailing. I do do coding on the side because I enjoy doing it a lot. Because I also look at research, read papers, you know, highlight things. This is like a Swiss Army knife for me. Uh, I have owned different iPads in the past, but I have, ha I have to admit nothing's come as close as to the iPad Pro. 12.9 inch for me and i've got the lte model so having the ability to be out and about and uh you know continue on with what you're doing is definitely a added benefit and i'll probably reap that benefit once um things get better in the economy and and, and out there with what's happening but uh, i have had an lte ipad in the past and the flexibility of being able to do things outside and not being tied to a network is uh is extremely beneficial now I'll say that the areas where I'll probably still use my MacBook Pro is for things like Final Cut Pro. I don't think it's perfect on the iPad yet, though I will tell you this entire video was created, edited, and published using LumaFusion on my iPad Pro. So. I haven't even touched my MacBook Pro for this, which is kind of cool as well. So in conclusion, I would say if you're a developer, stick with the MacBook. If you're a student and you're in some kind of a computer science program um, and uh, you know your primary usage for your technology is going to be for school, I would say stick with the MacBook. Uh, if you have, if you're okay with a little bit of compromise, but at the same time you do other things with it, like what I mentioned uh, previously, then go ahead with the iPad Pro. Hopefully this made sense for you guys. If you guys did like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.